How's it going everybody? Welcome back to another YouTube video showcasing more of the Pico CTF 2022 Capture the Flag. Let's have some more fun. I'll dive over to my computer screen and we will get back into the game. We're looking at a new web exploitation category challenge. This challenge is called Power Cookie. It has a good amount of solves for, hey, the number of people that have attempted it at the time of recording. It says, can you get the flag? Go to this website and see what you can discover. So I'll go ahead and navigate to this. Looks like we have an online grade book and we want continue as guest as seemingly the only button we can click. It says, we apologize, we have no guest services at the moment. Okay, that's pretty useless. I'm gonna hit Alt Left, left arrow key on my keyboard to be able to navigate backwards, and I'll go ahead and right click to view page source. Looks like that actually gives me the HTML, right? The source code of the web page, but it will also reference this script source guest.js. Uh, JavaScript function. If I click on that, we could see, ooh, function continue as guest, setting the window location to slash check.php, also setting a document cookie. Hmm, and that is an is admin set to zero. Now, uh, some of you might remember, if you happen to watch some of the previous older videos in this series, one of the challenges I was thinking, man, I wonder if it is just going to be a HTTP cookie. An HTTP cookie is that key or token or sort of like a name tag that you on your session that is navigating through a website is carrying around with you to validate to the web server you are who you say you are. Like when you log in to Facebook or Amazon or whatever, that's how the server way out there on the internet knows, hey, you are your individual account. Cookies might be the means of storing that. Cookies, however, are client side, local, like you can see them and modify them and tamper with them if you really wanted to. But hey, the only gimmick is that, okay, you might not be able to authenticate over on the server and the website you were just accessing. But if the cookies are used in a strange way or in an insecure way, maybe you could gain access to things that you weren't supposed to, to begin with when the web server expected it to set and forget the cookie values on your host and your web browser. So let's actually play with that just a moment. Uh, if I were to go navigate to this web page one more time, uh, let's say I were to try and continue as a guest, we apologize, but we have no guest services at the moment. If I were to open up like the developer tools, when I hit F12 on my keyboard, that will bring this open over here. And you might remember from that old video where I was thinking it was a cookie. If you navigate over to the application tab, up in the top right, I'm in Google Chrome personally. It might be different. It might look maybe something else for, hey, uh, Firefox or Edge or whatever browser you might be using. But over on the storage tab, there is a cookies option. And it looks like we might have things set here for the Saturn Pico CTF website, and I see that is admin value. It's currently set to zero, but if I double click on this, I can hit and enter the value of one. I don't need to modify or change any of the other parameters and kind of configuration settings here, because this is all again what the server would have set and would expect for this cookie that it might verify. And the reason that's important is because, sure, we saw in the guest.js script, we went to check.php. Keep in mind, check.php, it's running PHP code. PHP is that server side language. So the server side language might verify and look at the cookie that you are carrying with you. When we set is admin to one, it's like we set a Boolean value, we set true, we set yes, I am an admin, that is a fact, rather than our is admin being zero, which might refer to false, we are not an admin. So because I've made that change now, because I've gone ahead and modified my cookie, you saw me do it in the developer tools with F12 on my keyboard, control shift I or whatever. If I control shift R on my keyboard, that is a, that's a hard refresh, right? That's not even using the cache to reload the page, but re-asking the web server, please give me this web page. Looks like it's gonna do something different with how I navigate and interact with that website. Check.php probably looked at the cookie and then said, ooh, because you are an admin, let's go ahead and give you the flag. And that's all that this one was. <laughs> Kind of nice, kind of easy, right? Hey, let me show you how you could do that super simple on the command line. 
if I went into web exploitation um, and this challenge was called what? Power cookie? Let's make a directory for power cookie. We could again use curl as a command line, like web browser and URL navigator. Uh, we could go ahead and reach that specific link, check.php. There we go. It says, oh, you want to go ahead and continue as a guest because we probably didn't have the JavaScript code actually execute and say we had a cookie, like is admin is set to zero or is admin is set to one, who knows. If we did that, we could actually specify with curl tac tac cookie and you could specify is admin, like the name of that cookie. Set it equal to something like zero. That gives you the message that you would have expected had you gotten it from your browser. But hey, that tr proves to us and, and validates the fact that, hey, it is actually looking at our cookie with that server side PHP code. Now, of course, what we just did a moment ago was set is admin to one being a value, hey, we are controlling this because we can control our cookies. And that might trick and tell the server, hey, I'm an administrator. I want the flag and give me the flag. Don't know why that is uh, taking a little bit of time to load. Anyway, rerun it again and it does give us the flag. We can, as we have been, grep out the specific flag itself. Color equals none. And of course, because we're using curl, it's gonna display, hey, that download and reach out to the website. We can mark that as silent with that tac s parameter and argument. Entering that, we get solely the flag and we can save that as our solution. So we have a get flag script, we have the flag.txt locally, and we can finish this challenge. So that was a super quick, super duper easy one. Um, it was taking advantage of the fact that HTTP cookies are something that you can control and deal with and modify locally. But the web server might still verify and look at what that value is. If you can tamper with it, you might be able to access some things that you wouldn't had previously been able to. That's it, everybody. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching. Super quick, super easy, kind of a fun one. I don't know. Those are the basics and fundamentals of things that you should check for when you're playing Capture the Flag. If you're looking at web categories, you're looking at web challenges, even if you look at applications, you're doing bug bounty or penetration testing, look, take a gander at what those cookie values stores. And if it's in some weak or insecure or encoded way that you can manipulate it, it's worth bumping around and seeing what damage you could do. So that's it, everybody. Hope you enjoyed this video. Please do those YouTube algorithm things, like, comment, subscribe. You know the drill. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. I'll see you in the next one.